Hi guys, welcome back to Free Circle Lab. Let's talk about quick charging. Sometimes we see 5 volt, 9 volt and 12 volt is written on a charger or a power bank. But is it really possible to take out these voltages for some other purposes? Also we will focus on why do we need higher voltages in the first place. This video will help you understand quick charging better and will also help you to make your own trigger for QC voltages. At first let's talk about power delivery. Imagine you have a source and a load. You want to deliver 10 watt to the load. Watt means the product of volt and amp. So we can supply 10 watt by bunch of different methods. You can use 10 volt 1 ampere, 5 volt 2 ampere is also fine. In 2 volt you need 5 ampere or in 1 volt you have to deliver 10 amp of current. Dealing with higher ampere is difficult because it hits the wires and joints. So the lowest amp option is fine for us. If a wire carries more amp, it also loses more power. So raising the voltage in order to lower the ampere is suitable solution. That is why the transmission lines uses kilovolts of electricity and then steps it down to 220 or 110 volt with higher amperage. Similarly, when we charge our phone, there is a source, a load and a carrier cable. This cable includes two connectors and a wire. Pushing more than 2 or 3 amps of current through them will heat them and damage them. But they can handle higher voltages like 9 volt, 12 volt or 20 volt. It is just fine. That is why to fulfill faster charging demand, we raise the voltage 2 or 3 times or even 4 times than the traditional 5 volt. And then use a step down converter inside the phone to produce lower voltages with higher current and charge the battery. If we look closer and USB cable, we find 4 wires here. Two of them is for power and other two is for data connection. These are used for communication during charging. The phone tells the charger to raise or lower the voltage depending on the requirements. This table represents different voltages to feed in the data wires in order to get different voltages from the adapter. 0.6 volt in both wires represents 12 volt condition, 3.3 and 0.6 represents 9 volt and so on. Today we will talk about only these two voltages because my power bank only supports them. This chart tells us that we need to have these two voltages 0.6 and 3.3 volt, nothing else. So we will make them somehow from the VCC voltage. In this cable, the red is plus VCC, the black is ground, yellow is data plus and blue is data minus. Let's make a plan to get stable 3.3 and 0.6 volt from the VCC line. They should not change when the VCC switches to different level. Luckily, we can make them from different diodes. A normal PN junction diode has a forward voltage drop of 0.6 volt. So we can connect a diode in such a way with a resistor to get 0.6 volt here. And for 3.3 volt we can use a blue LED in the same configuration. Blue LEDs have forward voltages of 2.8 volt which is enough to trigger the expected 3.3 volt level because these are digital communication here the exact voltage is not so important. Here I have used a 1K resistor and a diode for 0.6 volt and 1K and blue LED for 3 volt. And let's connect a load to the power line to prevent the power bank from slipping. Now both the data pins are free, we get 5 volt from the charger. Now let's give them the configuration of 9 volt. D plus or yellow goes to 3 volt, D minus or blue goes to 0.6 volt. But nothing changes here. And as soon as I disconnect and reconnect the D minus wire, the voltage became 9 volt. Now let's hook both to 0.6 volt which is the configuration for 12 volt. But the voltage does not change until I disconnect and reconnect the D minus. Now we can see the communication is not so difficult. It is just some simple voltages and we can easily manipulate them. Let's do once more. D plus to 3 volt, D minus to 0.6 volt. After I disconnect and reconnect the D minus, we get 9 volt. And connecting both to 0.6 volt, we get 12 volt. But only after I reconnect the D minus. Taking a closer look to the table, we can find that the D minus connects only to 0.6 volt and for trigger it should be opened for a moment. But the D plus should be switched to 0.6 and 3 volt alternatingly to get different voltages. So D plus should have a slider to connect it to different voltages and D minus should have a fixed voltage but for trigger it should be opened or kept in 0 volt for a moment. So we can use a normally closed push button which disconnects if we press it. But such push button is very rare and I don't have it. So let's use another trick. 
I will connect 0 0.6 volt to D minus via a series register and I will use a normal push button to pull D minus to ground. I have connected a 330 ohm series resistance and will use the yellow wire to pull the D minus to ground. And as you can see, it works fine. Let's understand with a circuit diagram. The VCC goes straight to the output. 3 volt and 0 0.6 volt is made from VCC using LED and diode. Here is a slider switch to connect D plus to different voltages. And finally a resistor and a push button to trigger the D minus. Pulling the D minus to ground does not affect the 0 0.6 volt match since we have a series resistor in between. I hope this circuit will work. Let's see it again. I have selected 9 volt conditions but the voltage is still 5 volt. And when I connect D minus to ground the LED became brighter and we get 9 volt. Let's understand the PCB. This is the plus power and this is the minus power pin. Both of them goes to output directly. We have a 1K and a LED to make 3 volt here. Another 1K and a diode to generate 0 0.6 volt here. Both 0 0.6 volt and 3 volt goes to both side of the slider switch. The middle of the switch is connected to D plus. D plus sits beside the ground and D minus sits near the VCC plus pin. The D minus goes to this point where it has a series register of 330 ohm and connects to 0 0.6 volt and here is a push button to ground it momentarily. Let's test it. Now we get 5 volt. Slide the switch to 9 volt configuration and push the button to get 9 volt. To get 12 volt we slide the switch to the left but still we get 5 volt and when I press the button it triggers to 12 volt. I hope this video helps you to get some knowledge and make your life better. If so like this video and share this with your friends. Watch my other videos too like how I have tricked a triple 5 timer to measure capacitance. Okay thank you for watching. I will catch you in my next video.